27. 27. This is a 27 year old male. He's had positive for alcohol, has a few grams of coke today. Are you beta blocker. Are breathing, sir? Okay, we're gonna help clear out your chest. I'm gonna put a needle in your chest, okay? I think your lungs collapsed. We can actually put in a chest tube, I guess, if he's stable. Yeah, can I feel like this was a bad placement because his heart could be right there. Let's get at 18. Can we get some uh, IVs okay. in him? He has a How are you doing, sir? Um, hemothorax. I'm gonna walk uh, with you and then we're gonna, you're gonna talk with the trauma surgeons, okay? That's a wrap. The Goodman Center is one of the family of simulation centers at Stanford. There's a simulation room uh, with its associated control room. The simulation room can replicate various different clinical environments with a computerized mannequin standing in for the patient. Students come uh, to us with all this information and all this knowledge, they're, they're book smart. They know how to do procedures, and they know how to take care of patients, and they know how to interact with patients, but they kind of know how to do them all separately. You're simultaneously talking to the patient, examining the patient, treating the patient, monitoring the patient. That's a very difficult thing for people to learn, especially when they're uh, just beginning in their medical career. Typically during the um, simulator uh, cases, we, we break it down into either a medical case or a trauma case. So when the student comes in, they don't know which case they're going to get, a heart attack or renal failure and high, uh, high potassium, or they have a bleed in their brain, or you know a broken spine. The way that I like to run the, the scenarios is we do it what's called on the fly. Meaning, I hear that they are going to try something and I will say, okay, physiologically this is what's going to happen. Their heart rate's going to go up or down, their blood pressure is going to go up or go down, and the patient's either going to get better or get worse. And I will make the vital signs and the mannequin adjust to whatever actions they're taking. Can I get Dr. Chan in here, please? Sure. Trauma. Okay. Oh, here we so I'm just starting a trauma. We did, um, I got his fast airways intact. Okay. okay. Another chest x-ray in? I think radiology too, right? In traditional apprenticeship training, uh, we can't allow early learners to make errors that could harm the patient. If, if they do make a decision or do something to the patient, we see that it could cause harm. We have to intervene to protect the patient. Well, in simulation, we can let errors occur and we can let them play out to their ultimate conclusion. People can see the results of their decisions, even if those decisions are mistakes and the very powerful learning that comes from that. Okay, I'm going to shock. I'm clear. Are you guys, everyone clear? It's really nice to know that when you walk into the simulator, you're not going to be killing someone. And if you mess up, it's not like real life where I, you don't have a do-over. The other great thing about simulation is you can actually scale it for the level of the student. We can make the cases easier or more difficult by simply adjusting things in the control room. When they go in the simulator, they know we're probably going to make bad things happen and really stress them, but that's what it's all about. In fact, the psychologists have a term for that. It's called stress inoculation. By exposing them to stress in the simulator, we hope that they'll be better prepared for those kinds of stresses when they encounter them with real patients. I definitely get nervous. I think it's definitely realistic in the sense that you, you, know, you feel like your heart racing. You're, you're trying to think as quickly as you can on your feet. And that part, I think, is very useful because that's kind of contributing to training you to be like a quick decision maker. Yeah, I can get your heart racing. <laughs> Afterwards, we go through what's called a debriefing process. And the debriefing process is probably where most of the learning occurs. You really can like see, okay, I didn't know this. I knew this. Um, I could have done this better. And it's a really like safe environment to talk things through and talk mistakes through. There's no multiple choice prompting you to say like, you know, you have these options you really need to remember on your own. That's good because that's how you know, you know, I, I need to go read up on this after I come out of the simulation. It takes people from talking the talk to walking the walk. So it's one thing to be able to regurgitate the facts that you've learned or to have the ideas in your head, but actually being able to use them in a dynamic way at the bedside is a skill that's really hard to learn. I think the most important thing about the simulation um, experience for me is increasing my confidence and my ability to handle situations um, that are stressful and that I actually like know what I'm learning. A lot of the time students go through classes and go through their clinics and they don't really feel like they've learned anything at the, at the end of the month. 
And I really find that the simulator really gives them a chance to say, wow, I really did learn a lot. And I really am learning things in medical school. This is awesome. Like someone can come in and I can be by myself and like take care of myself and know when to ask for help and uh, know what to do. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.